Mine's not quite as complicated. My uh, background for the last 28 years is pretty much flex uh, flexography or flexographic printing, converting. And most of that, for the most part, has been used to produce um, uh, pharmaceutical labels, uh, packaging, polyethylene, polypropylene, all these type things. That's where the flexographic end of it comes in. Probably about 10, 12 years ago, some of our, um, our customers we got involved in with the fabric printing. So that's what we're going to get into today and talk about that. But color, as you know, color is everything. It's, it's our life, it's our world, it's, uh, the sky is blue, not the blue that the other blue, but it's called sky blue, not that other type of blue. But, uh, but that, that's the, uh, just for not this the book, but it's the color. It shows you all the, the different, you know, the advantages of color and those type of things. It's all around us. We're surrounded by it. <coughs> Our customers um, purchase their emotions, everything purchases. Everybody's very excited about color and it motivates. It makes you sad. It makes you happy. Uh, you name it. It gets technical, like says Tim was showing us. I was just absolutely amazing, and the things I never knew, I'm not familiar with, and um, probably probably will not be, to be very honest with you. But uh, it's a little bit out of my realm. But it's kind of besides the, the, the color. It's in nature. It's in industry. It's everything. Um, converting. When we're printing, converting, our expertise is more towards not the, the fabric dye or the color per much, as it is we're laying down, helping do images, um, uh, labels, uh, fabric labels, for like the back of your shirt, that's huge. That's all done like on the focus machinery, which we'll get to in a minute. And there are different variations of this. Uh, there's the, the flexographic end of it, which we'll discuss pretty much in depth. And there's the digital end. The digital end is really making progress. There's a, there a, a seminar earlier. Wish I'd have been there. I didn't do that. I was hoofing it up from Charlotte. Didn't get to see it, but nonetheless, I would like to have. But uh, there's all sorts of different uh, variations of the new equipment that's being developed in the marketplace. This is one of the ones that shows the, uh, one of the processes material coming through the machine, laying down the application. Um, this is the analog roll. Now this is a big, big part of what goes on in the flexographic industry. This is the heart of Flexo. The analog roll, it's a, most of the time these days, it's a, a ceramic coated, it's laser engraved, as is this, and you really can't tell it, but about every one inch has, um, it's based on a square inch of, uh, measurement of unit. And it's uh, lines per inch or uh, line cells per inch. And that can be anywhere from um, measured linear across from uh, 200 to 1200 to 1400. And uh, the trick is, it's laser engraved. That's a cell. This is what we call a 200 line count. Measuring exactly uh, one linear inch across under a scope, you're going to count, you'd have uh, 200 cells. And these cells are laser engraved. And that's what carries your ink that it lays down to your fabric. And this is how we, we monitor and how we measure the amount of ink that's laid down and transferred to our substrate. And here's the, uh, here's the chart. This is the, uh, our, uh, our, our Bible, so to speak, for converting. On your, your Y and X up, up top is your line screen, which is your lines per inch. That's how many cells, we call them lines per inch, LPI, cells per inch. That's how many you have. And basically, it runs across, but the more important is the volume. We have to run down here, and the volume is measured in BCM, which is billion cubic micron. And so basically, we're going to run across and find whatever is the most optimum engraving or in the ink transfer for the exact type of, of process we're trying to print. Let's say, I'm sorry about the not being uh, that, that clear, but let's say the most common probably for, that we do for the textile is probably around a 200 line count volume. That's 200 cells per linear inch. And the, the, the trick is people say, well, gee, we want to get more ink. We want to get more lay down. Well, it all goes back to what Tim was talking about. And if it's got a cure, it's got to dry. We'll go into all the attributes of that as well. The higher the line count, the less ink. Because we're, trying, we're getting more cells. We're getting more cells. That's just one of the build-up process to restore the diameter to the rolls. But uh, the more cells we have per linear inch, the smaller they are, and that's less ink. So conversely, just the higher the line count, the less ink, the finer the print, the finer the type, the, uh, it's going to also be less ink to absorb into the material. Other types of roll, we, we do some right that, are, that are like a random ceramic that are used for like a very solid heavy print, those type things. Not really regulated, but it's not really metered either. So it just kind of just throws it down there 
and makes it, um, makes it applicable. All the rolls, they all have to be tested and measured for all the exact depth. So it ties in exactly what Tim was saying. So we know how much ink is to be transferred. It was a glue applicator roll for uh, putting uh, different materials together. And basic printing plate. This is a little, uh, it's, uh, a ribbon, um, looks like a, a ribbon print shop. You have a, uh, a photopolymer plate. Put on your plate cylinder right over here. It's attached and this is going to run across and it's going to run at v various speeds. This is kind of an older piece. It's the only slide I had available. So I apologize for the uh, uh, crudeness of the, uh, of the image. But nonetheless, uh, in the, the Flexo process, you have your, your analog roll. It's going to transfer your, your ink to your plate and your plate's going to transfer it directly to your, your fabric, your material, whatever we're trying to convert. It's different variations on the color, the schemes. The thing about, um, that's a, a colorful uh, fishing lure set I was wanted to do. I thought it was pretty, I thought I thought it in there as well. Uh, Calvin Klein jeans, all your jean companies, all your labels, these are all uh, done flexographic. These are, that's how they run on the, these little focus presses like this. They're made over in England. Um, but there are problems, there are challenges when you're trying to convert with Flexo. It's a, it's a more complicated process than digital. It is a higher speed. We'll go into the attributes as well. Uh, inconsistent print color, that comes down to your, your roll, to your line count, your volume of your roll. If you're getting washed out colors and it's not strong enough, you have too high a line count, you're not getting enough ink transfer to your plates, thus for to your substrate. The only other problem with that might be is the, uh, um, the pigment, your ink load. We try to keep inks, uh, they're um, very consistent usually from plant to plant. The plants generally run the same supplier so we know exactly what type of ink, what type of viscosity we're going to get to convert to uh, manufacture and get a good print quality. Pinholes or fishing, uh, uh, not too common on the um, on the, uh, the fabric end. Washboard, that happens sometimes also. It happens on paper and it also happens on, um, on uh, when you're doing uh, labels and you're doing ribbons as well. And it's just basically, it could be a speed and adjustment rating um, and a, a film too thick on your substrates as well. Uh, dirty print or in halos, this happens a lot. Customers will reject. Your, your buyers that are buying for all your, your fabrics, your stores, they're going to look. They're going to look for, for clean, crisp, nice definition. If they don't see it, it's going to be rejected. It'll probably rejected the plant, hopefully, but some stuff slips through. You don't want to have halo type images, leading edge or trailing edge, which you have up here. That can be a, a plate issue. The plates can be too strong, uh, too much pressure. And did I freeze that up? Thank you. Okay. Uh, tr poor trapping. Poor trapping happens when we have uh, the, uh, the ink is the drying speeds. We need to change the viscosity. Uh, plate impression might be too hard or the plates might be unworn. They might be worn or cupped or glazed and can sluggish. What that will happen is that will fill in. Fill in will get you rejected. You want nice open letters on your O's and your P's and everything like that. It's closed in. It gets rejected, and particularly when we're doing a, a label that might be applicable for the uh, pharmaceutical industry, it's not going to happen. It's got to be very legible. It's going to be talking down to uh, two point, four point type. It's real small, real fine. Well, it's still thinking about not working for me. Okay, I, I got it. I'm not sure what the, uh, the, the, the header on that one was, but we'll just... Uh, I'll check and see. Okay, ink smearing and tracking. This is huge. We have this a whole lot in, um, in, in our textile customers and their plants. Whenever we try to run speeds, it's all about profitability. It's all about performance. We want to measure the two. And in order to have a profitability, we want to run through as much material as possible. We have to have performance. We don't have performance. If we have bad graphics and it doesn't look good, it's going to get rejected. So we have to balance the two. One of the biggest problems right here, the ink smearing. This goes down back to the wetting process Tim talked about, to the application uh, as far as it, it can track if it's not uh, dried properly. Um, could be that the ink is too thick, the film thickness is too much, uh, the applications can be uneven on the substrate, or the ink's not drying and the, just to the, to the substrate. And it, it can be a problem. When it tracks, it's going to ruin the whole, the whole lot of what's being ran. 
solution on that is uh, reduce your viscosity. I uh, can uh, reduce the ink film, the better meter, either with a doctor blade or a rubber roll system. Most of the, the new systems are going to a doctor blade system, which is either a stainless steel or a mylar plastic blade system to wipe the additional ink off the roll before it's transferred to the printing plates. Pouring coverage, this kind of goes back to again, we talked about uh, weak printing as well. If it's poor ink coverage, an issue you're going to have is either you're not getting enough material, enough ink laid down, you can't just pour a bunch on there because you get too much, it goes back to the tracking issue. If, it, if you have too much material, like Tim said, it's going to sit on top, it's going to track, it's not going to happen. You can have ruined material. I mean, that was the print, that, that's two kind of fall into each other, but. Kind of the same thing. And that was for all of our Clemson brethren for last weekend's debauchery in Raleigh, just let you know. So thank you. We're coming back in, in basketball. Um, yeah. But the, uh, that's, that's the slides for the most part. But I tell you what's happened, folks. The, 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 the digital printing, that's what's coming along. The, the higher quality, if we can get the speeds up in digital to where they're going to be up to match the speeds of Flexo, it's going to be the game changer. It really is. Flexographic right now is far and away, it's a faster process. It's a lot harder to set up. There's a lot more work involved in it with uh, plate preparation. Plates are expensive. You have to have very seasoned operators, not just young people that are computer guys that can run digital, that can make it happen really fast, really nice. But the flexographic process is it's a very challenging process. Um, P, uh, also, the, uh, the Flexo uses pretty much the PMS, the Pantone matching system, which is very convenient as well. A lot of customers come in wanting uh, different variations of colors applied to their fabrics, what it might be. And a lot of them come in, they want to use the PMS matching system, which we try and accommodate. Um, we talked about surface tensions also early. A lot of the dyeing levels are very important, and um, it's got to have it. We've got to make additives. Uh, Flexo requires a lot of additives as well. Um, you get a very vibrant color availability in Flexo, which you can get also in the, uh, the digital printing. But the digital, if it comes along faster, it matches the, fle the speeds of Flexo, it's going to be a really nice combination. It'd be a good marriage because it comes down to performance and profitability. That's what you've got to have. So, any questions?